Hello, and welcome to the Public Speaking Superpowers podcast. This is your host, Karma Spence, author of the best selling and award winning book, Public Speaking Superpowers. In last month's episode, my guest, Francisco Cosman, talked about how to have your own podcast. Well, this month, my guest, Case Lane, is going to talk about how to be a guest on other people's podcasts. Case Lane is a global writer, podcaster, entrepreneur, traveler, and founder of Ready Entrepreneur. A former diplomat, consultant, and corporate executive, she now prepares aspiring entrepreneurs to understand how to take advantage of technology and global resources to achieve lifestyle freedom by starting their own online business. After a book promotion podcast tour, Case developed an approach to help professionals, writers, entrepreneurs, and other public speakers understand and navigate the growing podcast industry as guest speakers. Now, this interview you're about to watch was pre-recorded, so you're about to notice my famous wardrobe change. Welcome to Public Speaking Superpowers, Case. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Now, you and I were talking before the recording came on about how big the idea of guest podcasting is. Yes. That is finding podcasts to go be a guest on. And you've done some research into this. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your philosophy of how to become a guest on podcasts? Absolutely. So now there are, you know, podcasts are growing, growing, growing. There's so much excitement around them. And there's so many different subjects that are being discussed. So that's both the good news and the bad news, because how do you find podcasts that are talking about your subject? You're, if you're a public speaker and you want to be out there, you want to be promoting your message, you have to narrow it down. And the podcast directories that list podcasts are not as, you know, they're not robust search engines like Google, Google or Amazon. So, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they're very broad categories. So what I did, I, I started out looking into podcasts to guest on for a book that I was writing. So I had to start looking at all the different categories. And the process that I followed was, first of all, you know, I, I'm assuming you, you create your idea, you know your pitch, you know your message. So the first thing you're doing is so you're looking at those categories. And you go to the podcast directories, you go to the big ones, like you, I, I'm going to, I'll say Apple for now, but I'll come back to why that's not where you'd, you'd go to get a lot of different names. But you, what you want to see is how they categorize podcasts, because you're going to think of whatever your subject is, where it fits. And right now, they're, mm. they're, again, they're very big business is, you know, a whole thing. Health is something. So you have to think, okay, where does my subject fit? because that's how you're going to search. And you can also search by keywords. So you come up first with your list of categories and your list of keywords. And then you're gonna go into not Apple, but the bigger podcast directories that provide you with more search results. So mm -hmm. this is the challenge, even though Apple podcasts and some of the other directories list every podcast, if you put in a keyword, they'll only show you the first 100, for example. And mm -hmm. in a world of more than, you know, million podcasts, you really want to get narrower and narrower because obviously everybody pitches to the top 100 podcasts. And of course, one day you'll be on all the biggest shows in the world, but to get started, you might not be able to start there. So yeah, exactly. You want to, <laughs> you want to go into another directory like Listen Notes or Blueberry and some of these other ones that return more than a hundred names for any given keyword. So you put in your keyword, you get those results. And I always start by just making a list. I create a spreadsheet and I just put in all the names. I just put in every name that looks good. Not every podcast directory is going to give you the show description when you first search for the name. Yeah. So you kind of just go guessing. And you, so I put a, I would put down a big long list of all the names. Then I go and I search each name one by one. So that involves, at that point, I do go to Apple. So I will search for the name and I will, because Apple's, when they bring up the podcast page, it will show you the description, but it will also show you the first three lines of the episode. So you can Ooh. really tell, does this host actually have interviews? Because again, you're looking for interviews. <laughs> exactly. Um, and now, oh, and I should say the very first thing to look at, because you are looking for interviews, you're also looking for active podcasts. And not every podcast is active. <laughs> and you, this will be, you'll get this very quickly. Um, so when you go to search, the first thing to look at, what is the last episode posted date? Now, mm. this, you know, a bit of a caveat on this is the fact that unfortunately, there's no way for the podcast directories to know 
if a podcast is active or inactive. A podcast, all podcasting is a free for all, so everybody can do yeah. what they want, right? Exactly. Do what they want. So a podcaster could just take six months off and be coming back later, right? So yeah, you don't really know. I use six months as my cutoff. If I see that there's been no show in the last six months, I don't reach out to that podcaster. But if I see that there was a show maybe three months ago and everything else looks like it's totally on my topic, then mm-hmm. when I reach out, I will actually say, I noticed you've not posted an episode for three months, but if you're still doing interviews, you know, I'm interested. So you're looking at that page, you're looking for the, so the last episode posted date, look at the show description, look at the episode descriptions to see if there are actually interviews look at the episode duration, you know, so if it's a bunch of five minute shows, then probably they're not talking to people. Right. Once you see all that, then go to the show or the host website. Now, some directories provide a link to the website directly on the page, which is great. Like TuneIn does that. So you can just click over to the website. Others, you'll just have to go into Google and search for it. And what you're looking for on the website, of course, is a way to contact them. Right. But you're also looking for more information about you know, look at the page, the host page and see if there's any place where you resonate, you know, there's something you have in common. Look at those interviews, start listening to the show. If, if this really looks like a show that you're going to reach out to and you really want to be a guest on, listen to the show, try and find some common ground. Because once you find the contact information, I always look for an email because I like mm-hmm. to write an email pitch and I know, and I'll talk about social media in a bit, but I like to look for an email. A lot of hosts actually now have a guest request form to fill out. So yep. that's always on the website. Make sure you fill that out. If that's what they have, make sure you do that and don't just send an email. Um, right. Some people on their regular contact page, they'll make a note that say, if you're a podcast guest, use this page. So you want to look for all that. You want to you know look at the website, make sure it's all there. Some people don't have websites. <laughs> a lot of people are starting yeah. podcasts just to see what it's like and they're just getting started. So you might be lost in that case. You won't be able to find anything. And that's when I, you could go to social media. Again, if everything else lined up and it looks like the best show for you and the interviews are good and they're exactly your topic, then you go to social media. But social media is a little tricky <laughs> because indeed, you know, you know, people may not want to see in their messages, you know, somebody say, hey, can I be on your show? Plus, it's also difficult to put your whole pitch into yeah. you know, a little message box. So you that's when you, for social media, you just decide, you know, if that's a host, you're desperate to be on the show, the topic is exactly what you're talking about, then maybe start reaching out to the host on social media slowly. Like it might be a much longer process. Some people, if they have a, a page for their show, they might have a web an email on their Facebook page so you could get it there. But I would say social media is a slower process. So I would start first Indeed. Yeah. as the directories, Google, find the website and, and try and find an email address from there. Now, you said that you can re- that you've actually reached out to podcasts that hadn't had, had episodes for three months. Mm-hmm. Have you had luck actually getting on to any of those podcasts? Attention authors, speakers and coaches. Does your website attract nothing but crickets? and tire kickers, then you might be committing one of the five deadly mistakes of homepage design. Home Sweet Homepage, how to fix the five deadly mistakes that authors, speakers, and coaches make with their website's homepage will help you clear the crickets, repel the tire kickers, and start attracting the right kind of traffic that will convert to readers, clients, and speaking opportunities. Available wherever books are sold in paperback and ebook formats. Bookmarketingclub.com forward slash homepage book. Now, you said that you can, that you've actually reached out to podcasts that hadn't had episodes for three months. Mm Mm-hmm. Have you had luck actually getting on to any of those podcasts? Yes. And that's why I, I, I make a point of saying that you don't really know for sure what the podcast is doing. I, because podcasters have come back and said, yeah, um, I was taking a break, but I'm thinking about starting up again. I'd like to interview for the, you know, this, whatever the time frame is, that type of thing. And that's very common. I know that for myself, when I first started podcasting, my shows were not consistent. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, uh, it's something I, I think just to keep in mind, you look for those ones. If it looks like, you know, especially if somebody has a full on website and a show that hasn't been recording lately, you can think, well, they seem to have a business going. So maybe reach out and just see what's going on. Right. 
Well, I know shortly after the lockdowns happened last year, uh, I took about a three month break. It had nothing to do with COVID. I was moving out of state yeah. <laughs> and it was getting to the point where I just needed to focus on packing boxes yeah. and not recording yeah. and editing podcasts. But you know, I left a note on my website, okay. but I, I think that not all podcasters think to do that. They just they just add it, it ghosts their yeah, own show. It's, true. it's <laughs> rare that there's a, a final episode or anything like that. Like sometimes there, you know, there's clearly a final episode, so you know, but um, most of the time it's like, that's why it's a question mark because what are they doing? And it could be that everybody's just thinking about it. it it's getting a podcast up and running nowadays. You know, it's pretty straightforward people because and many everybody's doing it. So I, I'm always surprised when I see one episode because I always think if you went to all the trouble coming up with a name and there's a nice little artwork there and all that kind of stuff, but one episode is like, yeah. But I guess somebody tried it and just didn't like it. You see that quite often. So that's one of the things about the process I'm talking about is very much a DIY process. Do it yourself. It's not about, you could hire a PR agency to go through all the podcasts for you, that kind of thing. What I like about the process I'm talking about, the approach is that you, as somebody who's in that subject that you're talking about, you're mm -hmm. now reaching out to podcasters who are also in the subject. So you're actually learning more about your own field. <laughs> you're learning yeah. more about your own topic. You're talking directly to people. Maybe you'll it will lead to collaborations. You know, some people I've met on just through this process, I've gone back and worked with. I think I'm on the third or fourth project that has come. That's a different something different that has come yeah. out of the podcast interview. So I really recommend for people instead, it, it, especially and if you hire a PR agency, you might get one or two interviews. But I was I was doing two or three interviews a week. Um, just from doing it myself a couple of hours every day, going through my list, as I mentioned, you know, and, and just researching one by one each of the podcasts on my list. So I highly recommend that um, as if you're, you want to speak, you want to get your message out, you want to talk about, you know, you build, you can grow your audience, the podcasting, reaching out to podcasters, being on different shows is just such a great way to do it. Exactly. And, you know, just what you were just saying made me think of something. As an author, you are almost always working on your next book mm -hmm. and you're marketing your current book mm -hmm. and there's 10 million ways to market your current book. Mm -hmm. How do you balance? Okay. Now I'm working on guest posting. Now I'm working on whatever else it is now and carve out time to write. Oh yes. And, and maybe have a family the time to spend and whatever. How do you, how do you prioritize what marketing tasks you're going to do? and to also fit in writing. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I try to organize my day very strictly. So I will, let's say, for example, when I'm reaching out to podcasters, so okay, first two hours of the morning is reaching out to podcasters, and then the next four hours is writing, and then the next you know, two hours will be administrative work, something like that. So I try and bucket everything, and I do like to bucket things. So I would, you know, if I am doing podcasts, for example, I will I do a bunch of interviews in a row, get those all edited, and actually post them up and then not have to think about podcasts for another month because right. I know I've got them all posted already and they're ready to go, you know, for, for those dates. And the same thing with even social media, I finally figured out how to do schedule social media ahead of time. I do go in and look because I like to interact with people and different things, but I, I you know, I don't let that sort of weigh on me. So that's, exactly. so, so the, the big thing for me is just bucketing the work because I'm one of these people who likes what I call a long runway. So I like to know, okay, I've got four hours and that's going to give me time to do this, 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 and this. And I just go and do it all in that time block. So I try to stay very focused when I do that. And, but, you know, I admit like everyone else, you do get distracted, other things come up and so on. And so you have to roll them over to the next day, but I do try and stick with my discipline when I'm working on something. That's great. So is there anything about guest podcasting, a tip or, or a tidbit of information that authors who want to speak and get on podcasts or even new and aspiring speakers who want to use podcasting to help grow their speaking. Mm -hmm. What are, is there anything I haven't asked you that could help these people? Yeah, I'll touch a bit on the, on what you're actually going to say, because remember, it, podcasting is talking, so you do have Indeed. to have something to say. So and I absolutely recommend before you've done any of the work I've talked about where you start searching, work on your pitch. Like, and the pitch being, 
what is that message of value that you're going to deliver to that podcaster's audience? Keep that in mind at all times. In the back of your minds, yes, be honest, you, you're trying to promote your book, fine. But why is it valuable to somebody else to want to buy your book? Why would they be interested in it? And you want to get really nail that. That will help you as well when you're searching, when you're looking at podcast descriptions, when you're listening to episodes. It should be very clear in your mind about exactly you know, what kind of audience you want to reach out to and why. And don't worry about, um, you think, oh, that podcast might be good, but then that episode sounds a little off. It's not really my message then move on to the next one. Like there's, you, you've got tens of thousands of podcasts to go through. So don't, <laughs> don't worry about thinking, oh, you know, I, I did some research here. And now this doesn't sound right. Like may, you really want to make sure you're getting to the audience that resonates with your message. And you want very, very clear in your mind what that message is. So spend the time upfront on your pitch. And then, you know, there's a couple of housekeeping things too. Make sure you have a good headshot because this will all be promoted all over the place. So you want to have a good professional picture. Make sure you've got a, a microphone. I know some people are worried about that, but microphones are not expensive and it's good to have an external one because again, it's all audio. It's about having clear sound. Exactly. Now saying it's audio, you also have to be camera ready. <laughs> so a lot more podcasters are interested in using the videos. They're putting out, they're actually, actually video podcasts. Mm -hmm. get through the podcast app. And so as that becomes more popular, you still want to, you know, even if they, if it's audio only, you still want to be ready just in case it is video. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I have your bio ready, have your links ready, just have all those things ready. And then once you've got your interview, be prepared on the other end, <laughs> you know, make sure you're prepared to promote it, have a process in place that you can, that you'll be, you know, that you're going to be posting on social. And so make yourself a good guest that way so that people, other people will see those promotions and maybe be interested in also in having you on their show because they see that you're somebody who also promotes the show. So you want to keep that in mind too. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, if someone want to learn more about you and, and what, your podcast, because you said you had a, a podcast before we got on to here. If we wanted to learn more about you, your podcast, your books, where would they go? Yeah, come over to readyentrepreneur.com and you can join the community on any page of, of the website. Uh, and I keep you up to date with tips and strategies. And you can also, um, you could find all of my books, including podcast discoveries on Amazon or wherever you get your eBooks. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing such detailed information with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. Wonderful. Well, this is the end of the Public Speaking Superpowers podcast. This is your host, Karma Spence, signing off. Goodness gracious, I can't read to save my life. Ah. You know, there's an art to this, and I am not an artist. <laughs>